Just killed my meal ticket. Uh, I can't write this stuff anymore. <sighs> Breakfast. Oh, halo. In heaven where streets are paved with gold, one of them shall be named for thee. I never eat on an empty stomach. Thank you. Be gone. Morning, Mr. Pratt. Ah! Good friend, Parver. Barman, clean glass for my friend, my colleague, my courier, publicist, my pet. You have an appearance at noon, Mr. Pratt, or have you forgotten again? Oh, probably never knew about it. On the contrary, this time Mr. E.C. Allen himself ah. sent you a telegram on which I was copied. Imperative, you meet public appearance obligations. Stop. Last legend novel, barely recouped expenses. Stop. If contract not complied with, advance on next book for oh, but stop. stop! Please. All he asks, all I ask, is that you be Nicodemus Legend for two hours. Smile at the people and sign some books. Oh, please, not again. Now, there may be reporters. <laughs> so before we get there, would you care to fill me in on what happened in Colorado? Excuse me? Arapahoe County, Colorado. What? A little matter of a warrant for your arrest. What? Never! <laughs> Where? I never touched you. I tell you, I've never been to Colorado. Land of the orange sky. What about it? Legend helped that school teacher lady in Colorado in land of the orange sky. That was fiction, Antonio. Well, the warrant is most certainly nonfiction. This is from Reuters. Now, needless to say, Mr. Allen did not appreciate seeing your name or his in this context. The Arapahoe County Sheriff has issued a warrant for the arrest of legendary dime novel hero Nicodemus Legend on charges including theft of water rights, malicious mischief, and disturbing livestock. What? I am not, nor will I ever be, a man who disturbs livestock. 
legend known as the Knight of the Prairie has been the hero of a series of novels published by the E.C. Allen Company of Augusta, Maine. Now, needless to say, Mr. Allen would like to know what's going on here. Oh, Harry, tell him it's a misunderstanding or a joke. You know, this is the sort of thing Ned Buttmine would pull. Yes, that's it. Blame it on Buttmine. As we discussed, the receipts of your last book were disappointing. Now, so far, there is not even a hint of a new book, and now this potential scandal. Now, Mr. Allen has been saying maybe Legend's time has passed. Maybe he needs to look for a newer, younger writer. He, he said, said that. that. Damn. Did you get it all? No. Harry. I find this quite demeaning. There are still a few of your female readers left who would like a piece of you, Mr. Pratt. Ah. We're dropping the price in the next catalog to 50 cents a lock. You're a scavenger, Parver. It's legends hair they want. Not mine. This. Mr. Allen wants you to wear this in the next cover photograph. Why on earth? Well, we've acquired 5,000 coonskin caps. They're going into the catalog next month. We think young boys will love them. Uh, you tell Mr. Allen that no self-respecting young boy would be caught dead in a coonskin cap. Ah! Ah! How'd this nag get here? You know how horses feel about me? What? Oh. Sorry. Yes, I am taller in real life. Harry. My father says he's looking forward to your performance. Performance, eh? Yes, when you put on your legend wings and glide down from the roof to mount the horse. <laughs> Harry. Oh, no, Mr. Fat. Uh, we did not plan on doing this today. You see, we did not bring the legend wings. Yes, uh-huh. The legend wings do not work well in urban populated areas. Good one, Harry. Uh, and so, Mr. Fat, shall we retire to the other room uh, to be private, sir? Why don't, why don't you come with me, Mr. Fat? Uh, uh, sir, come with me, sir. Let's go. No, no, no. no. He loves the hand. Can people be so naive? I am not Nicodemus Legend. I am an earnest rat. Nicodemus Legend? The one and only? My name is Catherine Sullivan. I'm terribly sorry to intrude on your busy schedule this way. Not at all. Your smile enhances my day. Would you like me to sign a book, or would you rather have some hair? I beg your pardon? Oh, I'm not one of your readers, really. <laughs> well, how interesting. Please, sit down, Miss Sullivan. It is Miss Sullivan, I hope. Mrs., actually. But I divorced my husband two years ago. Then he died. Well. Winning the West was never easy. Mr. Legend, we desperately need you back in Colorado. Colorado. It's funny, you don't look like a bounty hunter. I'm not a bounty hunter. I'm an attorney. The farmers you helped hired me to represent them. In the water dispute? Miss Sullivan. 
counselor. I'm sure your water dispute is of the utmost importance, but I know nothing about it. I've never been to Colorado. A mistake has been made. The farmers saw you. You spoke to them. It's not true. Mr. Legend, you rerouted the course of the Platte River onto their land. Oh! Changed the course of a river, did I? That's right. Hmm. How did I do that? I don't know. I'm not Nicodemus Legend. What a coincidence. Neither am I. Madam, I assure you, I am merely Ernest Pratt. Ink-stained wretch of a man, sometimes successful author, and free for the evening, incidentally. It worked, didn't it? The warrant has scared you off. You're just gonna pretend that nothing ever happened. You're just gonna let those poor farmers lose their land? Oh, I wish I had the slightest idea what you were talking about. Yeah, but I am willing to listen. I think I've made a mistake. No, no, not at all. Please, you've made a long trip. Allow me to offer the hospitality of the city. I can show you the sights of San Francisco tourists rarely see. My hotel room, for example. has something to do with filling that inside straight last night? If you know what's good for you, Legend, you won't ever come back to Colorado. My friend, I swear I've never been to Colorado. What about land of the orange sky? Always a pleasure to meet a fan. <laughs> Lunatic could stop that. They say he's trying to make it rain. Yeah, Miss Peacock said none of her yard hens are laying since that racket started. sharing the miles with you, Miss Freeman. I look forward to helping you establish your trade here in the wilds of Colorado. I bet you are. Uh, you better go tell your ma he's back. Here you go. Thank you. Yep. Sure that's him? Oh, yeah, that's him. Excavating around here? No, that's just Professor Bartok out of his laboratory. Shooting lightning bolts up in the sky. Lightning bolts, is it? Yeah, he's some famous European inventor. Well, at least he says he's famous. 
The folks around here think he's doing the devil's work. How's that? Well, some of the cows stopped giving milk when he put up his rain tower. But Garda sisters out on Boulder Pike said the electricity in the air caused them to grow mustaches. But if you ask me, their mother had a pretty good nose brush, so I figured the electricity had nothing to do with it. And then there's my hair. I like it. <laughs> what was the name, son? Skeeter. Skeeter! Can you direct me to the... Sheriff? Well, you see that building there? Big sign says, Sheriff? Yeah. That'd be the general area. Be in that area. general area, yeah. would it? Thank you. San Francisco. That's right. Can I have your autograph, Mr. Legend? My name isn't Nicodemus Legend, son. Legend is a character in the book. I made him up. Is that your picture? Uh, uh, well, yes, yes, that is my picture. That's a device of the genre. Ned Buntline does it too. Device of the genre? Yes, sir. Now, I've taken the opportunity of collecting half a David's. Right. Thank you, Mr. Legend. You're very welcome. Now, these are signed and notarized statements concerning my whereabouts at the time in question, the time you think I was here. The Alhambra Saloon, the Oriental Eating House and Wine Room, North Beach Casino. These are all saloons. Your point being... These folks who saw you here were all sober. Sheriff, I swear to you, this is the first time I've ever been in Colorado. Land of the Orange Sky! It's just a book! Look, here, Sheriff. Here is my card, Ernest Pratt. My birth certificate, Ernest Pratt again. A picture of me with my mother, signed Mother Pratt. That's me on her lap. I'm Ernest Pratt. Someone is obviously using the name and reputation of my fictional character, Nicodemus Legend, for who knows what reason. Well, I appreciate your taking the trouble to come in here like this, Mr. Legend. No problem, Sheriff. You're under arrest. I don't want any trouble out of you. And I don't think you want to add to your troubles by resisting arrest now, do you? Chinatown Flush. Chinatown Flush? What the hell's a Chinatown flush? Any three clubs with a seven. All right, Smokey, let's go. Hey, what's for supper tonight, Sam? Liver and onions. Come on. Uh, sure. Did you happen to get through to San Francisco? Oh, uh, telegraph lines are down between here and Denver. Uh, Indians or something. You, uh, you got a visitor. Mr. Legend. Hello. It is a pleasure to meet you at last. May it be the first of many pleasures we share. My name is Vera Slaughter. I have a ranch just outside of town. But you know that, don't you? You've already been there the night you changed the course of the river. Now, that is my river, and I would like it back. I don't blame you. 
Well, it's very simple. You just move the river back where it belongs, and I will drop the charges, and you can be on your way home. As much as I'd like to oblige, I don't think I can move the river back since I didn't move it in the first place. <laughs> Please, don't take me for a fool, Mr. Legend. Two dozen people saw you there that night. So I keep hearing. Did you see me? No, of course not, but I know you were there with those local dirt farmers at Rockland Pass. You encouraged them to violate my property rights. Please, don't insult me by denying it. I have no wish to insult you, Mrs. Slaughter, but I couldn't find Rockland Pass if you gave me a map and that was the only thing on it. No, 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 please don't, don't, please. Can't we discuss this over a burden bottle? Obviously, we're just dealing with a minor misunderstanding. Have you ever written a novel about life in prison, Mr. Legend? Pratt. Actually, the name is Pratt. Miss Sullivan. Mrs. Slaughter. My clients have arranged bail for Mr. Legend. Don't leave the county, legend. It's Pratt. Thank you for this, counselor. How can I ever demonstrate the depth of my gratitude? Don't thank me. Thank them. They said they couldn't forgive themselves if they let you stay in jail. So they pooled the little savings that they had and got you out. God bless you. Thank you for coming back. Please. Madam, you're soiling your dress. Come on, Elizabeth. Get you're embarrassing, Mr. Legend. We just came to show our appreciation for what you have done for us, sir. You've given us hope and the reason to fight on. Well, I wish you all good luck in your struggle. It's gotten a lot worse since you left, Mr. Legend. Mm. Is Mrs. Slaughter? She's trying to force us off our land. She's poisoned our cattle. She's burned Laszlo and Greta's barn. We know it is her. But we have no way to prove it. That is why we send for you. Well, it sounds like a matter for law enforcement officials to me. The law around here is Sheriff Moats, and he's in Vera's pocket. Cozy? Till you came, there was no one to defend us. Now, wait a minute. Were any of you there at the Rockland Pass the night I spoke to you? Yes. Yo, we were all there. Mm -hmm. And you're sure it was me? Oh, yes. Of course. Mr. Legend claims he doesn't remember being there. Nicodemus Legend never lies. Maybe you're still hurt. You took a bad fall in Legend and Cherokee Joe. You've read Legend and Cherokee Joe? I've read them all. Really? And I've seen your face on all the books my Victoria has read. I'd never forget that face. Well, you know, I do still have some spells from that fall. Maybe if you showed me this Rockland Pass, where it all happened, it might jog my memory. Ten years ago, all this land through here was opened up to homesteaders, many of them Hungarians, like the Brawls. Hard workers, all of them. Anyway, everything was fine until about six months ago when Vera started to deny them their water rights. The river used to flow through here, Vera Slaughter's land. Now it turns and goes about a mile over that way, onto the homesteaders' land. 
That night when you made the river move by itself, no one has ever seen anything like it. You want to remind me again what that was like? Oh, there was a big noise, like thunder, only it came beneath our feet. It ground shook, and the river moved. Well, that's what we call an earthquake. No one knew what was happening. Some even thought it was end of world. And then we saw you there, on your great black horse. Oh, riding a horse, was I? You appeared in a cloud of smoke and told us not to give up, that you would return. And now you have. It's a cloud of smoke, huh? That professor who does the devil's work? <laughs> I'd hardly call it that. Professor Bartok has been a good friend and neighbor to the farmers. Bartok. If I'm not mistaken, that's a Hungarian name. Mr. Legend, we were expecting you. Janos Christoph Bartok, late of the University of Budapest and the Western Union Laboratories in New York. I style myself as the foremost enthusiast of the works of Nicodemus Legend. I see that you've met my trusted associate and colleague, Vizli Lopochli Ramos. He's descended from Aztec kings, but he has a summa cum laude in physics from Harvard College. I advise you to call him Ramos for obvious reasons. 
Would you care to join me for an early breakfast? I'm still on an eastern clock. I think we need to have a very serious conversation. Well, of course, but we can converse over shared eggs and ham. Coffee? It's amazing. Oh, Mayor Bagatelle, someday electricity will drive everything from bread slicers to flying machines. Professor? Please. Forgive me, sometimes I get carried away. Carried away, yes. I'd say changing the course of a river is getting a little carried away. I knew that once you were in on the case, so to speak, your expertise in scientific investigation would allow you to deduce what happened. Was it the magnetite spindles at the pass? The spindles did pique my interest a bit. Of course. Scrambled, sauté, poached, boiled. Just uh, coffee, toast, and the truth, if you don't mind. The truth? The truth is, my fellow countrymen needed a hero to help them in their time of trouble. What do you know about sounds? Just that you seem to make a lot of them. Sound waves at the proper frequency and intensity can be quite powerful. Focused and amplified at the proper place. And they can, for example, change the surface crust of the Earth. A river, say flowing in a certain direction would have to flow in the opposite direction to conform to a new landscape are you telling me you change the course of a river with sound waves except for a minor landslide it worked perfectly uh -huh. and why drag Nicodemus legend into this because I want to be left alone to continue my very important work so I decided to give all the credit for my miracles to the imaginary miracle work. That knight of the Rockies, the paladin of the prairies, the defender of the weak, Nicodemus legend. In short, he was tailor-made for the role. And just how did he make a public appearance at the pass? Hmm? Allow me to demonstrate. Remos. Remos? Smoke. Observe. I put it in here, and you see it there. My name is Nicodemus Legend. You must never give up the good fight. If you need me, I will always be there for you. Farewell. They say that Edison is working on one of these to make the pictures move. Another toy. That's all Edison is good for, plotting troll. More coffee? Hey! Do you understand what you've done? Of course I understand what I've done. Unfortunately, I'm frequently the only one who does. Yeah, well, I'd like to be left alone too, you know. But all of a sudden, I seem to be the object of your good sheriff's attention. And your first enemy is the most powerful landowner in the territory, the beautiful Vera Slaughter. Exactly. Sounds like a vintage legend adventure to me. Think of the great book you'll get out of it. Personally, I thought your last book lacked some of the creative fire of your earlier works. And some might wonder if you didn't borrow the underwater helmet from Jules Verne. That was an homage. If you say so. All right, Professor, here's what we're going to do. You're going to town with me, and you're going to explain to our good sheriff just exactly what happened to that river. Had I known that I was going to upset you so much, I would have acquiesced much sooner. I have no qualms about telling the truth to the sheriff, but I think that you will come to regret it in the end. Because you see, I'm clairvoyant. I'll regret it in San Francisco while sipping sweet bourbon while I read about your case in the Police Gazette.
You drink? Nicodemus legend doesn't drink. You recognize it? Blood on the Texas sand? Chase through the booby trap the royals. Ramos, fire it up. It's an intriguing idea to apply steam power to an untracked land vehicle. I call it the Bartok Steam Powered Town and Country Quadro Velocipede. Oh, I call it a Land Rover. Ah, well, whatever. You see that I have recreated many of your technological feats for my own amusement. Put it on. I predict that someday there will be facilities along every road dispensing water to power vehicles like this. Ramos, engage. Perhaps little necessities like maps, tobacco, and beer. You? Huh? Mr. Pratt. My name is Titus Berman, Denver correspondent for the New York Tribune. Excellent. I'm glad you're here. Maybe you can help me clear all this up. This is Professor Janos Bartok, and he's the... Janos Bartok, the uh, same Janos Bartok who was accused of patent infringement by Tom Edison back east last year. Those charges were thrown out. If you care to discuss the particulars, I'd be happy to speak with you. Not this trip, Professor. My assignment right now is Mr. Nicodemus Legend. My readers are quite interested in the sudden heroics of a person that uh, many of us thought was merely fictional. Heroic hell! He broke the law! That may be, Sheriff, but you have to understand the public's whims. Imagine the reaction when they learn a ten-cent hero is thrown in with a bunch of immigrant farmers fighting for the American dream. It's captured everyone's imagination. It has? Of course, there are others who wonder if Mr. Pratt is merely a self-aggrandizing fraud whose presence here is prompted by the flagging sales of his last novel. Careful. Just what is the truth, Mr. Pratt? The truth. Is that he's really helping the farmers. Are you saying you changed the course of that river? That's exactly what he's saying. I am? Mm. I haven't heard him say it yet. I changed the course of the river. Sir, that's a confession of guilt. Sheriff, do you honestly believe that Mr. Legend would have proceeded without fully researching the law? These charges against him are nothing but a nuisance. Any honest judge would quickly dismiss them. Well, then we got nothing to worry about. Beerus boy didn't get enough oxygen when he was born. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Legend, I think you'd better vacate the premises. Excellent idea. Oh. Well, well, well. Is this what they're wearing in San Francisco these days? <laughs> Looks real pretty. Like a girl's scannies. <laughs> and you know what? He even smells like a girl, too. <laughs> you know, you're not the first one to tell me something like that. I'm not, huh? No, no, not at all. Now, there was this young fellow one time, nothing like yourself, mind you. 
And he didn't like the way I dressed either, and I had to ask him why he cared so much about my clothes. And he kind of fumbled around for an answer until it became apparent that, well, he knew nothing about clothes except what he had on, and what he had on was, well, you know that pseudo-Western mail order kind of stuff that rich folks order from the fancy stores back east. Nothing like what you're wearing, mind you. Anyway, I admitted to him that I do care about fashion. I believe a man's clothes and the scent of his cologne can tell you a lot about him. As a matter of fact, I was able to take a look at this young fellow and venture a guess that, well, his mother picked out most of his clothes, because I'd seen the woman, and she ordered her outfits from the same kind of fancy Eastern store. It turned out I was right. And you know what? The next time I saw that young man, he had on some clothes he'd picked out for himself. Looked like his own man. Well, nothing pleases me more than to talk fashion with a smart young man like yourself. Let's do it again sometime. What say? <laughs> What the heck is that? The Bartok Bipolar High Intensity Electro Fulminator. Perhaps a little underpowered. was a great debt to Mr. Nicodemus Legend, with no way to, uh, how you say, uh, repay it. All we can offer is the bounty of our land, the fruits of our labor, and the love in our hearts. To Legend! Everybody, dance! Shall we? Thank you. Worth fighting for, don't you think? I sure wish I knew how to help these folks. You already have. No, ma'am. All I've done is show up to save my reputation and protect the golden goose that finances my poor excuse for life. That's it. Sometimes I wish I were a legend, but I'm not. Nowhere near. Well, then I guess you're pretty much like the rest of us. What happened? These are warning shots. Oh, good, they're leaving. And they'll be back. Come on. Stay down! Where 
the world did you get that suit? In town. In town? The suits in town are for sheep herders and immigrants. If you needed a new suit, you should have told me. Well, I like it. Well, it makes you look like a field hand dressed up for a court date. It's taken my appetite away just to look at it. Unusual weather we've been having. Seems normal. Well, from what I heard, you were apparently struck by lightning in the middle of the Buffalo Head Saloon. Fell legend's no big deal. I'll take care of him, Mother. Oh, I do wish your father were here at times like these. I wonder what he'd have to say to you sitting there in that cowhand suit, having permitted Mr. Legend to humiliate you and this entire family. Really, Silas? You are not half the man that he was. Silas, come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Oh, everything's going to be all right. This business just has Mama so upset. You know the pressure she's been under. Oh, we don't have time to be together anymore, do we? Well, don't you worry about a thing. Mama will take care of this, just like she takes care of everything. And no matter what, I love you. You know that, don't you? Everything I do is for you, Cyrus. Don't ever forget that. <laughs> now then, let's think what we're gonna do about Mr. Legend, who refuses to take a hint. <laughs> Perhaps this calls for some out-of-town talent. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it'll be as difficult as you do. I just can't assume the identity of Nicodemus Legend. Why not? Because we're nothing alike. He leaps wide canyons, runs like a deer, swims like a spawning salmon. <laughs> Except for the spawning part, I can't do any of that. Well, we'll compensate with science. Very much. Here, put this on. It's the Bartok Tight Focus Electromagnetic Disarmor. There'll be times when legend will have to ward off a heavily armed uncouth among us, and this will do it. Go on. It won't fight. You can't expect to stop Vera Slaughter with more tricks. These are not tricks, sir. These are inventions. I live with a firm conviction that one man can make a difference in this life. Uh, even as we speak, there's a man back east by the name of Alexander Graham Bell, who is perfecting a device which I predict will cause no end of trouble. And you think these inventions are gonna put an end to a land war, is that it? I think Nicodemus legend will put an end to it. Your celebrity has the power to give our enemies pause. My science can enhance that reputation and together we can create the real legend. And just what might that entail? Oh, a little wind, a little weight training. How's your stamina? Depends. I shouldn't have asked. Yeah, take this. All right. Lift it up. Aim. Ramos, draw. Push the button. A bit overpowered, but with a little adjustment, we'll get a patent on this baby.
Nico. Silas Slaughter. I cabled you about that. Where is it? Who? A legend I don't know is probably out of the laboratory on the outskirts of town. I have your money for you right here. Put that away. What? We're in the middle of the town square. I'd just soon not be seen with you, let alone your money. Yes, sir. I just, uh, I just didn't understand. Well, now you do. When the job's done, you'll pay. Uh, you must be a trusting individual, Mr. Coe. Son, what in the hell is wrong with your hair? Doc says I'm allergic to electricity. You know I can find a man by the name of Nicodemus Legend? Yes, sir. You tell him death has come to town. Is there a first name, or...? I'll be waiting for him in the saloon. Tilt it up! Tilt it up! The design is perfect. You're simply not compensating for the vintage. Mr. Legend! Mr. Legend! Mr. Legend! Hey, Skeeter! John Wesley Coe, the famous gunfighter. He's in town waiting for you at the saloon. He's come up from Texas to kill you dead. Well, I'll be sure to stay the heck out of there. <laughs> You tell Mr. Coe that Mr. Legend will be in to see him by and by. Will not. And that he looks forward to meeting him. Uh, Mr. Coe, give me a gold eagle for my trouble. Invest it well. We had no choice. We? We had no choice? We'll protect you with the electromagnetic... Excuse me. But no electro... Whatever is gonna stop hard and handsome Johnny Coe, the Sabine shooters, the fastest gun this side of the Pecos, the man who shot, the man who shot Vinegar Joe Poteet. He has his reputation, you have yours. It's even. What do you mean, even? His is real? Mine is the product of a drunken fantasy. Yes, but he doesn't know that. Don't you see? You can use your celebrity to intimidate him. Janos, you do not intimidate someone who was voted Man of the Year by the Texas Undertaker Society. You can't walk away from this. Oh, I think we should keep all options open for the moment. Think of the bad publicity if you walk away. An obituary is my idea of bad publicity. If you don't show up in town, hard and handsome Johnny might turn his attention to the farmers. Don't... Don't do that. Ah. Don't worry. We'll be right behind you. So, logistically speaking, I'll be between you and the bullet, right? Exactly! How nice. Hard and handsome? Some say so. I'm here to speak for a local party. That has an interest in your activities. And why doesn't that party speak for him or herself? A louder voice was wanted. Well, 
And by all means, bellow away. This party would take it most kindly if you were to leave town. Or what? Unpleasantness will ensue. Well, I came here to help some folks. I can't leave till my job is done. You're going to leave, whether you go out standing or with your toes pointing up in the air. Makes no difference to me. And I have taken the liberty of making a reservation for you on the next coach out of town. Good, I appreciate that. My job should be done by then. Now, you want to set some rules? Well, I didn't think rules meant much to the Sabine shootist. I don't get any pleasure out of it if it ain't done in a proper and fair manner. It's the competition, not the killing, you understand. Now, the guest shootist usually has the sun advantage. Whatever is customary here in Colorado. I'd just soon face off at 40 paces instead of 50. I've left my spectacles in the conveyance. Say, you didn't happen to read my book, Legend and uh, Ghost of Chiricahua Caves, did you? In my line of work, a man who reads is a man who's not keeping his eye on the door. So, you've never actually read a legend book, is that it? Nope. It's too bad. I think you'd enjoy it. I'll have to pick one up to read on the way home. Now, I think you should have a choice of weapons. Preferably, I prefer the... You know, I gotta tell you this. It's an absolute pleasure dealing with a sportsman. The Apache, for example, they don't play by the rules. I wouldn't know that. Legend in the massacre at Mesquite Flat. Uh-huh. It was quite an occasion. I surprised, disarmed, and disabled five heavily armed Apache. Between you and me, it was actually 15, and one of them had dynamite. My publisher made me cut it down to five, because it kind of sounded like I was bragging a little, you know. 15? Oh, yeah! But surely you've buffaloed as many, if not more, in your day? Well, there's that time in Amarillo when I gunned down the whole Hogan family. Eight all together, including a second cousin is in town for a family reunion. Beautiful. I'm sure your publisher was happy with that, huh? I don't have no publisher. You don't have no publisher? A man with the stories that you have to tell? Well, I heard you got 30 notches on your revolver's bone handle. 28, actually, there's a couple of fellas in Oklahoma that pulled through. I had to scratch him off. 28 notches is 28 novels. Do you have any idea how much money you can make from dime novels? How much? A whole lot of dimes. You'd get thousands up front, but the most important part of the deal is your back end. Got to look out for your back end. I always do. I'm talking about your copyrights, your foreign and ancillary rights, merchandise in the co-name, escalating royalties that... Let me ask you a hypothetical question. How much would someone like you be paid to kill someone like, oh, say, me? Hypothetical hell. I get 500 to rub you out. 500? That's it? I'm embarrassed. John, I can get you 2,000 for an advance on the story of the Hogan family alone. 2,000? I'll wire my publisher right now. I have foolishly not put much aside for my declining years. It's understandable. Probably didn't think you'd have it. Professor, I'd like you to meet a very good friend of mine. John, this is Janos. Janos, John. Ah, I quit. Here you go, son. Pay for the drinks, will you? Keep the change. Nice outfit. This is my privilege to 
introduce Governor Dennehy. Good people of Arapahoe County, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you here to this great jubilee. Yeah. This county has always had special associations with me, for it was here that I met and wooed the lovely Lula Bell Hester, who shortly after consented to become my bride. As you know, on August 1st of this year, the territory of Colorado will become a state, the 38th star in the flag of, look, up in the sky. Please, listen, your attention should be up here. I am making a speech. Please, wait, I'm coming to the best part. an entrance, Mr. Legend, but your timing could have been better. Smile for the camera, Gov. Could come in useful in your upcoming campaign. Oh. Well, in that case, won't you join us for the rest of the festivities, please? Thank you. And if I may borrow a page from our distinguished guest, the Mr. Legend. I believe I may have underestimated you. Well, that's nice. I'm used to being overestimated. As a gesture of goodwill, I'll get Sheriff Motes to drop all the charges against you. One of my favorite gestures. Would you care to join me for dinner at my home this evening? Eight o'clock? Make it 7.45. And we're in a deep and serious conversation regarding primates. And so Clemens says, I think God created man because he was disappointed in the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Some cognac, Mr. Legend. Now, this was old when Napoleon was a boy. Ah, uh, no, thank you. Some more lemonade would be nice. Cigar? H. Upman? Cuban? No, no, thank you. Don't you ever relax your famous code of conduct, even for a second? I promise no one will ever know. Well, I'd know, wouldn't I, Mrs. Slaughter? Mr. Legend, Nicodemus, might I be so bold as to say that I find you to be an exciting presence here? Well, seeing as how you wanted to put me in prison the first time we met, I find that gratifying. I think what I have to offer could be very, very gratifying to both of us. Both of us? Well, yes. I know that you have an affection for those 
courageous homesteaders, as do I. I have, in fact, offered them fine profit for their land, as well as good-paying jobs in the factories of slaughter amalgamated. So might I assume that you intend to use this land for some new business ventures? Why, Nicodemus, am I mistaken, or are you trying to probe me? The evening is young. Oh. <laughs> oh. I don't seem to be able to hide anything from you. Yes, I do plan to build on that land. Investors are wanting to build the factories west. I want some of them to come to Arapahoe County with all those jobs and all that eastern money. Statehood is coming. A new state is going to need leadership, going to need men who can inspire the people to rise to this great occasion. <sighs> My late husband was such a man. He might have been governor had he lived, but since he died in my arms, I found no one to replace him. I mean, not just in my heart, but in the heart of Colorado. That is, until now. This state needs Nicodemus legend. You want me to be governor? Governor? Senator? Who knows where greatness can lead? What I'm offering you is a share of my vision for this state. A share of everything I have to offer. <laughs> oh, Vera. Darling, that's just one card too deep in the deck for me. What are you talking about? Well, offering that big a piece of the pie tells me you're worried. Really worried. Now, if I were a poker play man, which of course I'm not, just as I don't drink fine cognac, nor do I smoke fine Cuban cigars. However, if this were a poker game, I'd have to call your bluff. Right now. I figure you're holding a pair of twos. <laughs> it's a crying shame. Vera. It's been fun. We're a dying friend. Factories? What kind of factories? She didn't say. Yes, but why the farmland? Why, why not east or west or south of the town? She didn't say that either. I don't think she's telling you the truth. Well, she's sure not telling me the whole truth. No one would build factories unless there was a railroad nearby. If there really was a railroad tie coming through the county, whoever owned the right of way would stand to make a fortune. So she needs that land. And if the trucks are coming south from Denver, there's only one pass through the mountains, which is right here. But it's not illegal to build a railroad. No, but there's something wrong with it. Old Vera was willing to give me half the state of Colorado to stop looking into it.
Ah, Professor. Have a seat. What are you doing? I am waiting for the coach to take me away from your delightful confines. The stage does not leave until noon tomorrow. Well, then we'll have plenty of time to sit upon the ground and tell sad tales of the death of kings. How is Brule? It'll be fine. Doctor says that it'll take some time. Well, I can't say it hasn't been interesting from a purely dramatic point of view. But it's time to bring down the curtain. Oh, who am I? Ernest Pratt, novelist, ne'er do well. Tenderloin man about town, creator of tales that are not real. Who am I to buck reality? Hmm? Reality hurts. Reality kills. And when you're dead, the reality is it's over. That stage out of town tomorrow. It won't take you away from reality. Believe me, I know. I came here to get away from my own reality back east. Yeah. What happened to you back there? My first job was with Western Union. Thomas Edison was my colleague. He was diligent, hardworking, dull, and easy to underestimate. I knew so much more than he did. I was so far ahead of him. My discoveries were far superior to his own. So in the good old fashioned American competitive spirit, he did the only thing that he could do. He assassinated my character. He accused me of stealing his ideas. And you let him get away with this? By the time the charges were thrown out, he had the backing of the rich and famous. He was the darling of the press, and I was the butt of high society jokes. That sent you packing, huh? I had hopes, Mr. Pratt. I had hopes that in this new land, in this burgeoning new territory. But you see, Mr. Pratt, here there is Vera Slaughter. And here, they don't stop at the assassination of character. So you see, there's just no getting away from reality. Although I can't blame you for trying. Professor. Legend isn't real, am I right? That's what you seem to want to convince yourself? Well, if he's not real, then he can't be killed, unless I do it. Therefore, I must consider myself invulnerable. Come! I'll let you buy me a cup of coffee to celebrate the return of Nicodemus Legend. There's no time for that. We're going to Denver. Denver? Yes, to the headquarters of Slaughter Amalgamated. Wait. I've engaged the orchestra for the entire evening. Oh, bring them along. Now, I have created the Bartok High Frequency Communication Telegraphic Device. It will be able to communicate with the farmers
Good job. Huh? Influence, Professor, influence. But some would spend their whole lives trying to earn Vera simply buys. Wholesale, I might add. Ah, oh, here we go. One governor, signed, sealed, and delivered. He guarantees the Transportation Commission will approve her railroad proposal. In return, he... He gets 20% of Vera's corporation. They stand to make an awful lot of money building on the land along that rail. Yes, but that's illegal. Mm. It's unethical. It's immoral. It's how we built this great nation. But it's not illegal. Not until Colorado becomes a state. That's right. And if Vera doesn't get the land from the farmers before the law goes into effect, then she's out of luck. Right again, my friend. I wonder if our good friend from the New York Tribune would like an exclusive on the governor's land grab. What do you think? I think that's a good idea. Why don't you try a little lemon in your tea instead of that cheap bourbon? It's not cheap bourbon, Mother. It's your bourbon. You've taught me well. Thank you. Due to a potential conflict of interest, I regret that I must separate myself... Best of luck, Governor Denny. What is it? We've lost the governor. Without his help, we're dead. Not necessarily. I had a very good meeting with two members of the Transportation Committee in Denver last weekend. They are ready to vote our way. Oh, what did you have to give them? Those immigrants have to turn that land over to us before the commission meets next week. Gentlemen, gentlemen, bad news. The governor is unable to join us today, but... He sends his best regards and warm support for our plans. Oh, Mr. Montgomery, won't you please tell me more about that die cut process? <laughs> Across valley, burning everything. Making stand at Bro Farm. Send help, please hurry.
the perfect situation for the Bartok tight focus disarmor. That thing doesn't work. Well, you'll have to get the gun away. And uh, I've made progress. It's almost ready. Almost. Remember, when you get within 50 feet, flip the switch. Yeah? And just how am I supposed to get within 50 feet? No, no, this is wrong. Very wrong. Legend is the eternal optimist. No, you don't understand. I wrote this scene. I get shot. I die. I can assure you it's far more likely that you will crash and break your neck before he even gets a chance to shoot you. Thank you. The legend wings work perfectly. They are precisely balanced to your weight. Go! Okay now, little lady, you're safe. Thank you, Mr. Legend. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> straight. Nobody comes in and re-rats me. That's part of the deal. Johnny, it's nothing personal. Polishing is part of the business. Anybody that polishes me, I'm going to kill him. And you. Well, uh, there's a lot to be said for a singular creative vision as well. The marshal from Denver has arrested Silas and is taking him to jail. Good. And Mrs. Slaughter? Well, it seems her eastern businessmen have all pulled out, and so her little land deal is history. And I've heard that she's hired some big shot attorney from Boston to represent Silas by the name of Oliver Wendell Holmes. Oh, hmm? lawyers that go by three names are nothing but trouble. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Your imagination, but I'm hoping that it is sweet with the passion of did you tell him the part about the woman lawyer? Well, not yet, darling. <laughs> it's so exciting. I think John could be a major talent, don't you? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lady. Very kind of you. You should be walking into that, shouldn't you? Hmm? I mean, isn't that the way the stories always end? Oh, the sunset. Yep, it's a device of the genre. They have to end that way. Well, they don't all have to end that way. 
A fellow could find a few good reasons to settle down here. I know I did. Not this fella. Quiet place to ride. Do a little research from time to time. Nope. I don't think so. You know, I was telling an idea to Mr. Parver, and he said that E.C. Allen would love it. Love what? Keeping Nicodemus' legend alive. <laughs> no. He said you'd say that. My publisher does not have the right to tell me how to live. Uh, yes, well, he said you'd say that too, but that you would change your mind when they threatened to drop you. <laughs> Do you honestly think that you can go back to the life of Ernest Pratt so easily? Yes, I do. You know, you're not the same man who came to Sheridan. Whether you care to believe it or not, a part of you is legend, and you'll never be able to walk away from that again. I know I never will, because you see, Ernest, a part of me is legend now, too. Don't you see the incredible possibilities for real adventure? The practical application of science and invention I'm a good scientist. I can create what you can imagine. Doesn't that at least intrigue you? But you know, Ernest, I can't do it without you. Separately, you and I are heroes to no one. Together, we could become legendary. He said they'd drop me? <laughs>